Hello everyone, uh, welcome uh, to this video lecture. This is probably my uh, 54th uh, video lecture and uh, or 55th perhaps and today I will discuss with you DSE 4, Discipline Specific Elective 4 and specifically the history of English language and of course uh, much more specifically uh, the Latin influence upon the English language. In my uh, previous videos on history of the English language, I have already discussed with you topics like uh, the evolution of the English language. I have given you a brief overview of the evolution of the English language, uh, about the semantic shift that has occurred in the uh, development of the English language, of course the standardization of the English language after the printing press of uh, 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 popularization of the printing press of uh, 1476 and uh, the ingrained uh, gender bias or gender discrimination uh, that resides within the English language. Today, uh, as I have said that I will discuss the section C of your syllabus, enrichment of the English language and particularly Latin influence, Latin influence upon the English language. So, let us begin. English is basically a Germanic language, it is basically the Teutonic branch of the Indo-European family of languages. Uh, so, the Indo-European family of language is a tree to see, we have to say that we have to treat at the Germanic branch, uh, at the Italian branch, other branch, which is a Germanic branch to be the English language. And specifically, uh, and hence a significant uh, portion uh, of the number of the vocabulary uh, of English has originated from the Romance languages. Romance means French, uh, 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 Italian and other languages, Anglo-Roman languages. But at the same time, uh, it also borrowed greatly from Italian, Portuguese and Spanish sources. But this Italian, uh, this, this Latin influence upon the English language actually uh, began very early, much more earlier than the Scandinavian and the French influence. It began through the coming of the Romans uh, into the uh, British soil. So the Romans arrived in England after the Celts. They arrived around 43 AD and they ruled the entire England for almost 350 years uh, to 400 years. They left England around uh, 410 to 440, many said 450 AD. And after uh, uh, these Romans arrived, uh, the Angles, Saxons and the Jews in the 4th and uh, 5th centuries in England. Later arrived the Vikings, uh, the Scandinavians, the Danes, uh, the Norwegians and uh, uh, the Swedish people, much more later in the uh, in the late 7th and 8th centuries. So, we can clearly say that the Latin influence upon the English language is much more an primordial influence. On ek aage shuru hoye chhe, ata aadhi prabhab bolte ja bojha hai, Latin air, English ro pore, shayi prabhab bortoman chilo, because of the Roman Empire. So, the Roman Empire in uh, England was uh, from 43 to 450 AD. And along with it, uh, various words like, uh, for example, anchor, butter, camp, cheese, chest, cook, copper, devil, dish, fork, gem, inch, kitchen, mile, mill, mint, noon, pillow, pound, sack, wall, street, wine. These are all basically Latin words. They have been borrowed into the English language. So as I was saying that the loan words and the words uh, 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 that a language can borrow from other languages is a very powerful source of a living language. The language is a very powerful source of a living so, English language was constantly been influenced by many languages. So, Celts at first, then by the Latin, then by the Scandinavian languages, and of course, then by the French, 
uh, uh, German, Italian, Spanish, of course, in fact, Indian, Turkish. So English has borrowed from all these sources. Latin is one of the primordial of the influences upon the English language. The Christian missionaries coming to the Britain in the 6th and the 7th centuries brought with them various Latin religious terms which entered into the English language. Terms like abbot, abbot is a religious term, uh, uh, altar, apostle, candle, candle, Judeo Maneoche, Mombati, in the basically uh, Christian religious ritual ke uh, enrich put the candle at Projanato. Clerk, mass, mass means Shawai Mile, Akshonge. Uh, 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 a ritualistic ceremony the engaged it is, it, it is called uh, according to the Christian ritual a mass minister monk nun pope priest school shrine so these are some of the religious words uh, uh, borrowed from uh, the religious domain of the Latin language so a bhabe pratham Latin borrowing upon the English language pratham shuru hai upon the English language so, uh, some of the primordial borrowings uh, from the Latin were uh, wine, pea, plum, cheese, chip, mint, street, cook, kitchen, meal, etc. The words that were borrowed mainly related to commerce and travel, war and warfare, because these are some of the basic preoccupations in which the Latin people engaged themselves. Names of the household articles like vessels and various receptacles and names of the plants and the fruits were borrowed from a Latin language. So, some of the words mentioned above, these words, were brought with the Anglo-Saxons also when they invaded England. Because, uh, in addition, the coming of the Christian culture to England in a Latin form with the Roman missionaries and those from the Ireland in the 7th century brought a few more known Latin words. So when Anglo-Saxons invaded uh, Great Britain or England, they also have come with them other various Latin words. Tarawanek bulu Latin word anlo. For a Latin word, English vocabulary tape, protuish, uh, according to some of the statisticians of the or the sociolinguistics almost, 15% of the English vocabulary is consisting of the Latin influences. Ingriji Bhashar Punero Shatan Shodivino Shabdo Latin Shabdara Prohabito. So foreign ideas such as those of the monastic living, bishops and the priests, Christian symbolism, etc., had no native equivalents. So as we can see, uh, as I have already informed you, that French brought with them the language of administration the language of judiciary, the language of the executive machinery. But Latin have come with them the language of Christian symbolism, the language of theology, the language of ecclesiastical worship. So uh, with them, uh, some of the biggest uh, borrowings upon the English language through the Latin language occurred through the, re uh, occurred through the mode of religion. So Christian symbolism, words uh, uh, from Bishop, uh, words that uh, uh, that explains various Christian rituals have been uh, directly borrowed into the English language so that a number of Latin words gave the English terms that have remained with us C.L. Rain said and these words are as I've already said uh, minister have been arrived from the Latin monasterium monastery monasterium minister J monastery the thake monk uh, derived from the Latin uh, Monarchus, Bishop, uh, derived from the Latin Episcopus, Episcopal authority, the Bishop. Priest, derived from the Latin Presbyter, Presbyterian Church, English. Church, derived from the Latin Syriacum. So most of these uh, Latin words were originally Greek, since it was only from their Latin forms that English language adopted them. So beside these Christian Latin loan words in early Old English times, there came into the language some permanent Christian words to express the new ideas, also from purely native sources. For example, Old English word estro, 
Estron actually referred before the coming of the Christianity to a great pagan spring festival celebrating their goddess of spring called Ostro. So it's a basically a pagan goddess, Bohudev Badi Tarachilo, Eishonakar Anglo Saxon. Uh, they believed on the existence of the multiple gods. They were pagan and heathen, and hence they worship. Hence they worshipped Ostro. Ostro, uh, uh, and regarding this Ostro, they have created a great uh, pagan spring festival, celebrating the goddess Ostro. From this, this old English word Yestron have been derived, but later this Yestron has been transformed into Easter. Easter celebration, like a Christian celebration. So from a pagan celebration it has transformed itself into a, a monotheistic deity from a polytheistic religion the word has uh, borrowed uh, b b b b Easter which is a, essentially a monotheistic festival has been uh, borrowed from a polytheistic religious festival uh, Eastron and then when the Christians came with their great festival of resurrection it seemed so like the native Eastron that the word remained in the language with an entirely new significance of Christian character so this pagan word uh, got a Christian character, a Christian tint, and so only the older sense was modified. Another example of this type is the old English word bless, which remained but the sense was modified to denote the Christian idea. So let us begin with the Latin influence after the introduction of the Christianity. Some of the important words after the uh, introduction of the Christianity are the English borrowed the names of a whole host of church dignitaries like Apostle, Disciple, Pope, Archbishop, Provost, Abbot. So these are some of the hierarchical positions uh, in the church. So the English people have borrowed these hierarchical positions from the Latin language. Besides the names of the things connected with the Christian religion were also introduced as for example various names uh, uh, proper noun and common noun like shrine like cowl cowl is monk's hood it's called cowl monkera je tupir moto kore thake ke cowl bole pal rule mass offer altar anthem martyr so these are some of the words that have been borrowed into the English language from the Latin sources. There are also some other words after the Middle English period, which has begun from 1100 after the Norman conquest in 1066. Uh, there were other uh, uh, words too, not only from the spheres of religion, but also from the spheres of the law, medicine and alchemy, and also a number of abstract nouns. And along with these, many literary terms were also introduced. Some of these words are legal. Legal is a Latin word. Prosecute, prosecute, kora. Okay, doshi shabbosta kora. It derived from Latin. Custody. Uh, uh, the police has, has taken custody of the robber. Robber in custody, police nilo. Dokhole raklo. Words like zenith. Zenith of success. It refers to the sky. Index, mechanical scientific terms have been derived from Latin. Incarnate, that is uh, derived from the incarnation. Pulpit, rosary, scripture, derived from Latin. These ecclesiastical terms have been derived from Latin. Words like allegory, ornate, smile. These are some of the literary terms have been directly borrowed from the Latin language. And of course, words like lunatic and ulcer have also been derived from the Latin language. So now let us move into the Latin influence during and after the Renaissance. As I have already said that uh, the Latin influence upon the English language can be divided into basically three stages. Latin influence. The one is the extremely early stage or the primordial stage when the Roman people arrived in the Britain from 43 to 410-450 uh, uh, AD. Then the early Middle Ages and the late Middle Ages of course and Renaissance uh, and the fourth stage can be called also the Industrial Revolution. So Industrial Age. 
and then we will of course discuss whether this influence of the latin is a help uh, to the english language or is a hindrance ami shotti sahajjo koreche naki nana dhoroner oshubidhai srishti koreche question e pore whether latin influence is a help or a hindrance badha praptir kaj koreche bibhinno jaygay kina so renaissance now uh, during the english renaissance which has began around uh, 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 1400 1493 Uh, from 1500 to 1650 some almost 10000 to 12000 words entered the english lexicon the latin words including word lexicon itself which means dictionary is a latin word some examples of the uh, uh, latin words from the renaissance periods are aberration allusion allude kori anachronism an- anachronism what is the meaning of the anachronism কোনো একটা পার্টিকুলার ঘটনা যেটা পরে ঘটেছে আমি লিখছি তারপরে আমি দেখাচ্ছি আগে ভেবে নিয়েছি এটা অর্থাৎ আমি জেরক্স মেশিন সম্পর্কে লিখছি দু হাজার সালে কোনো একটা ঘটনা একটা প্লট যেটা ঘটেছে ষোলোশো সালে ষোলোশো সালে জেরক্স মেশিন আবিষ্কার হয়নি হয়েছে উনিশশো সালে এটা হচ্ছে ইজ অ্যান এক্সাম্পল অফ দ্য অ্যানাক্রোলিজম ডেমোক্রেটিক ডেক্সটেরিটি এন্থুসিয়াজম ইম্যাজিনারি জুভেনাইল পারমিশিয়াস sophisticated so these are some of the examples of the latin uh, 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 influences upon the english language at the time of renaissance especially during 1550 to 1600 why this has occurred because of the rebirth of the classical scholarship renaissance is generally known as the rebirth rebirth when our punor janma why rebirth তার মানে কোনো একটা সময় নিশ্চয়ই বার্থ হয়েছিল জন্ম হয়েছিল কখন হয়েছিল হোয়েন দ্য ক্লাসিক্যাল অ্যান্টিকিটি গ্রেটলি ইনফ্লুয়েন্স দ্য ইউরোপিয়ান সিভিলাইজেশন দ্য রাইটিংস অফ অ্যারিস্টল প্লেটো সক্রেটিস ডেমোক্রেটিস হেরোটস হ্যাভ ট্রিমেন্ডাসলি ইনফ্লুয়েন্স স্পেশালি দ্য ক্লাসিক্যাল সিভিলাইজেশন অফ দ্য অফ দ্য হেলোনিক সিভিলাইজেশন অফ গ্রিস অ্যান্ড দ্য অ্যান্ড দ্য ল্যাটিন সিভিলাইজেশন দ্য ট্রিমেন্ডাসলি ইনফ্লুয়েন্স দ্য ইউরোপিয়ান সিভিলাইজেশন but later on uh, these manuscripts have been uh, 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 ha- 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 have got uh, distributed throughout the entire europe uh, have dispersed throughout the entire europe after the fall of the Ro- roman empire in 1393 in the hands of the turks the fall of the constantinople actually dispersed these manuscripts across the entire europe and uh, uh, after then the rebirth of the classical scholarship occurred which led almost inevitably to the enrichment of the english language by a multitude of words derived from the classical languages which exercised tremendous influence on the english tongue so uh, now well, let us have a look into uh, these words so what are these terms latin borrowing uh, into the english language is actually also mean that uh, words like for example grave gravity solid position these have been borrowed uh, into the uh, english language uh, various scientific words have been borrowed into the english language and uh, apart from that in the middle english the forms uh, were perfect and varied coming from the french from the latin was added to them and the forms now become perfect and the uh, bardic so perfect and varied are the uh, uh, are basically french words latin should be perfect among varied polo middle english uh, doughty and dirty coming from the french became doubt and debt a b coming from the latin here b is not pronounced date and doubt middle english language coming from the french was changed into language in fact the word language was essentially latin in origin coming the u coming from the latin and changing the pronunciation as well the latin prefix ad ad is now seen in advice adventure which were aris and aventure in the middle english so bujhte parcho notun prefix ebong suffix jog kore notun shobdo creation e latin ekta ottonto important influence niche এগুলো কিন্তু আমাদের ইউ হ্যাভ টু মেমোরাইজ আ লট হিস্ট্রি অফ ইংলিশ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ স্পেসিফিক্যালি দ্য ইনফ্লুয়েন্স সেকশন দ্য ইনরিচমেন্ট অফ দ্য ইংলিশ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ সেকশন যেখানে ল্যাটিন ইনফ্লুয়েন্স ফ্রেঞ্চ ইনফ্লুয়েন্স স্ক্যান্ডিনেভিয়ান ইনফ্লুয়েন্স 
খুবই গুরুত্বপূর্ণ পরীক্ষার জন্য ল্যাটিন ফ্রেঞ্চ এবং স্ক্যান্ডিনেভিয়ান এগুলো তোমাদেরকে অল্প হলেও মেমোরাইজেশন করতেই হবে মুখস্থ করতেই হবে এছাড়া আর পথ নেই কারণ শব্দগুলো তো কোনোভাবে তোমাদেরকে মনে রাখতে হবে তো মনে রাখার পথ তো একটাই ফলে এগুলো একটু একটু চেষ্টা করবে মনে রেখে পড়তে ফর এক্সাম্পল এভরিল হ্যাজ বিন ল্যাটিনাইজড ইন টু এপ্রিল ওকে সো লেট ইস নাও বিগিন দ্য ফ্রেঞ্চ অ্যান্ড দ্য ল্যাটিন ফর্মস এক্সিস্টিং সাইড বাই সাইড উইথ ডিফারেন্স ইন মিনিং ইন সাম কেসেস ফ্রেঞ্চ অ্যান্ড দ্য ল্যাটিন ফর্মস কো এক্সিস্ট মোর অর লেস ডিফারেন্সিয়েটেড ইন মিনিং এস ফর এক্সাম্পল কমপ্লেসেন্স মিনস পোলাইটনেস কো এক্সিস্ট উইথ ল্যাটিন কমপ্লেসেন্স মানে টাকা দা সিও এম পি এল এ সি এন সি মিনস সেলফ স্যাটিসফ্যাকশন সো কমপ্লেসেন্স পোলাইটনেস কো এক্সিস্টেড উইথ দ্য ল্যাটিন ব্যাড কমপ্লেসেন্স দ্য ফ্রেঞ্চ বেস কো এক্সিস্ট উইথ ল্যাটিন বেসেস then let us begin the differentiation in french words and their latin derivatives so uh, that there were intricate relations between the french and the latin is seen in its derivatives they are differentiated by difference of the vowel and the consonant sounds for example color is a french word but discoloration is a latin word has been derived from the latin note the difference in the vowel sounds color u discoloration example is a french word but exemplary is a latin word machine is a french word but machination or machination is a latin derivative now there are also latin borrowings where there occurs a non adherence to the classical pronunciation or meaning where there is a, a, a no adherence towards the classical pronunciation uchcharoni bodle gache onek shomoy manei bodle gache there are many words as used in english which do not conform exactly with the rules of the classical pronunciation or classical meaning as for example latin uh, propagate uh, there was a huge stress on the propagate propagate uh, for example enormous latin e ekane enormous chilo irregular sound but in french but in english it means very large i in the latin it mean it meant irregular item uh, it's a latin word it means also but in english uh, 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 item is basically uh, uh, is a is, is a single article for example ponder latin ponder means wait but in english it means to think over chinta kora climax greek climax theke climax means a ladder so uh, according to auto yes person in his uh, he he's a famous linguist in his famous book history of the english language he said the classical literature became a fruitful source of information and inspiration no wonder then scores and hundreds of the words should be adopted together with the ideas they stood for so many words have been uh, derived have been directly borrowed from these classical literatures so various uh, uh, hundreds of scientific terms chemical botanical biological and uh, other terms have been also derived from the latin as for example words like fixation affixation primal clim- uh, 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 climactic and as well as innumerable modern formations in ism like classicism favoritism realism individualism have been uh, derived from uh, the latin words then of course the formations ending with ist ist like florist jurist copyist scientist i mean derived from latin formations end with all eglo ke protek ki bola hoy suffix suffix mane it's ending with uh, uh, with something ar uh, prefix mane beginning with something for example pre lapsarian pre ekhane ekta prefix age hole prefix pore hore suffix so uh, formations uh, or suffixes ending with al all are also found in the words like eventual fragmental etc so many words were formed by authors on incorrect classical basis but after these authors there is nobody else to keep these words current and pass on them as for example dickens's uh, vocular examinations dickens used this word it's, it's a latin word kintu dickens er porei shobdo na ekta byabohar koreni Edward Bulwer-Lytton used the word viperious viperious cat 
video was mentioned, Thackeray used it. Uh, Andromeda, it's a Latin word, so you can see that in the Victorian period, a lot of Latin loanwords has, has been borrowed by, have been borrowed by this great uh, 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 Victorian authors, Andromeda, used by Tennyson. Inquisitorian bishops, used by Milton. So thus, uh, we can see a huge influence, Latin influence, has occurred into the English language. We can also see that the uh, uh, other classical influence of Latin and the Greek language occurred uh, 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 during this Renaissance, after the Norman conquest uh, and during Renaissance, suffixes ending with Asian, for example, in starvation, ative in talkative, uh, accuracy in, uh, in landic, landocracy, ism in heathenism, or ending with izd in omanize, etc. Prefixes. That is beginning with X, uh, that is X king, re as in rebirth, inter as in interchange, pre as in pre word, jugdhirage, pro as in pro foreign, foreign ed dk, pro foreign policy, d as in deprovincialization or deprovincialize. Uh, Latin influence the neya So here we have discussed some of the great examples of, uh, uh, of the Latin words that have tremendously uh, influenced the English language. Now let us discuss about the advantages of the Latin influence upon the English vocabulary. What are the advantages? First, enormous addition to the English vocabulary. First advantage is that many words have been uh, borrowed into the English language and the English language of today is richer than any other languages of the world because of its great vocabulary. The second is that Latin words fill up the gaps in the native stock of words. There are certain gaps in the native stock of words. expression Latin expression gulo devar phole gap For example, Latin adjectives. There are various Latin adjectives uh, which uh, created great classical formations uh, uh, that has been borrowed into the English language as for example uh, uh, mouth, mouth is a uh, is basically a noun, adjective oral nose, noun, nasal, mind, mental eye, ocular, it's a Latin adjective sun, filial, moon, lunar sun, solar, home, domestic domestic is a Latin word so, uh, and here are some of the native proper names and their Latinized adjectives. Oxford is a, a proper name. Oxonian is an adjective. Cambridge, the Canterbridgean. Gladstone, the Gladstonian. Dorset, Dorsetian, Milton, Miltonian. Native adjectives by the side of Latin adjectives having the same meaning as, for example, heavenly. Heavenly manager, celestial manutai. Dutor manihocha shorgiyo. The celestial is much more a sophisticated word, has been borrowed from the Latin language. Waterly, watery, aquatic, fatherly, paternal, it's a Latin word, motherly, maternal, truthful, very veracious. So these are some of the examples of the Latin adjectives. Native adjectives and Latin adjectives with meanings a little differentiated. For example, kingly native means gracious qualities of the character associated with an ideal king. Royal suggesting uh, the pomp, the glory, the splendor and the majesty of the kingship. And regal, it's also a Latin adjective, means pardoning to a king or stately. It actually uh, signifies regal dignity. So, uh, though Latin adjectives were borrowed yet, English has a number of native endings by which it could easily turn nouns into adjectives. Even the suffix through the Kushoge noun ke adjective English for a fella jai, they come in, why, ish, lee, fool, as in silken, flowery, bookish, fatherly, sinful. So, easily uh, uh, adjective ke uh, adjective transform kore nema, shaho jupayo English language in the chile. Secondly, in many cases, English does not use adjectives at all. The purpose of that 
the purpose of the adjective is served by the use of a compound word such as birthday eyeball etc and in several cases a noun is also turned into an adjective by being placed before another noun as london market chaucer society dukho uh, noun adjective pore tola hocche onek khetrei noun er pashe por por duto noun boshiye now we will come into the discussion of the synonym so the synonym synonym means uh, where the meaning of the word is almost same so more than anything else the richness of the english language manifests itself in its great number of synonyms like amra stock of word or vocabulary boli basically so some of the latin words that are mane uh, aki uh, some native words in the latin words uh, uh, their meaning are sometimes the same kintu the latin words have been directly borrowed into the english because of its sophisticated quality for example fire tari onek sophisticated form hocche conflagration latin word conflagration so ghuriye bolle boro kore bolle dhat bhanga shobder byabohar korle latin shobdo kintu onek shokto fire shohoj conflagration rise simple word ascend asking interrogate interrogation So interrogate, ascend, conflagration. इगुलो शब्दी Latin word. उन्होंने देखे fire, rise, ask. इगुलो शब्दी native word. And there are also various synonyms of nearly the same meaning but slightly different uh, uh, suggestion. So slightly different. It produces slightly different meaning. Now some synonyms have nearly the same meaning but imply slightly different shades of thought or convey. some precise sense as for example youthful look uh but juvenile literature for example readable matter but legible handwriting same story uh but not identical manly is less abstract than masculine greatness is less specialized than magnitude in which conveys a specialized sense so a equal to the second word magnitude masculine identical uh, 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 legible handwriting uh, readable matter do roche english it do legible handwriting look at the type latin borrowings into the english language now we will see use of the two synonyms side by side for uh, amplifying the expression okay where an expression will be amplified some native and latin synonyms do uh, meaning exactly the same thing are used side by side for the purpose of the amplification of expression as for example blind forgetfulness mane amun dhoroner bhulo mon jeta sampurno andho blind forgetfulness hmm it's a native word but in latin you can use it as dark oblivion amun ta oblivion amun bhule jawa jeta dark andhokar they are utterly unlike it's a native word they are utterly dissimilar it's a latin word they are utterly dissimilar in all respects so use of the two synonyms side by side to avoid repetition for example we who boast of a land of freedom we who live in the country of the liberty Uh, freedom and liberty liberty is a latin word he asked me to put out the light and i instantly extinguished it repetition ke bondho korar jonno putting out or extinguish kora dutor mane aki ek dike putting out is koche ek dike extinguish is koche it's a latin word that repetition ta na hoy now uh, we'll talk about international intelligibility kete jekhane antorjatik mane ei latin er acceptance er kotha jekhane bola hoyeche some classical words adopted into english have one advantage in the sense that they are intelligible and current among different nations though they are used more for international communication than the convenience of the native people for example telegram is a latin word and telegraph is also a latin word are used generally for international intelligibility in place of more homely expressions like where and to where where mane tar tar er madhye betar taronger madhye kono message pathabe tar bodole kintu telegram ba telegraphy use kora hoy jeigulo latin word though there are 
some native words which are also internationally current uh, like check, trust, sport, etc. Now we will come into uh, uh, the issue that whether Latin influence is a help or a hindrance. I have discussed about the various uh, advantages of the Latin language. Now we'll discuss about various disadvantages or drawbacks of the Latin influence. Many said that the Latin influence of the English vocabulary has stunted the growth of the native vocabulary. Native vocabulary growth is not a bond, it is stunting. Why? Uh, because Amon on a coroner shop do you will more resourceful, highly resourceful. Therefore, English language is not a good thing. But to this argument, the objection is that resourcefulness of the English language should not be underestimated for old English was highly resourceful and it would therefore have been possible to find an adequate expression in the vernacular or to coin one out of the native speech material but gradually the English speakers lost the habit of looking first to their native resources and utilizing them to the utmost because of the Latin influence that are native resources uh, a Latin influence of Fole, uh, a Gordonata Coteche. None other than a Latin word could be shown by the word English vocabulary. Te. First, uh, superfluous and inharmonious Latin adjectives borrowed. So, uh, it can be said that the English has quite a number of endings by which to turn substantives into adjectives. And the fact that the English does possess not a few native adjectives by the side of more learned ones. And moreover, it is contrary to the genius of the English language to use an adjective at all. The Germanic languages combine two ideas into a compound noun, but the English use adjectives. Birthday is much more English than the natal day, or eyeball is much better than the ocular globe. In the Igloke, use kora hoche Latin A. So, eyeball ke Latin express kora ocular glow. Arabish is shocked to Korcha Hashata. Again, the mere position of another noun is really the most English way of turning a noun into an adjective, as London market, Chaucer society, etc. And lastly, many Latin adjectives are quite superfluous and are almost never used, such as autumnal, hibernal, barnal, estival etc. It is much better and more English to use uh, autumn, winter, spring and summer. But the Latin is autumnal, hibernal, vernal and estival. So uh, there is thus an unnaturalness in forming Latin adjectives like the above and these adjectives are out of harmony with the short and simple native words. English native words are much more simplistic uh, much more uh, short, precise and concise, but the Latin words are much more ostentatious, much more difficult in nature. Now, uh, let us move into uh, the next section that some Latin synonyms are superfluous and sometimes purposelessness. Uh, how uh, it can be admitted that loose and inexact thinkers will always tend to blur out any sharp line of demarcation that may exist between such synonymous terms as do not belong to their everyday stock of language. For example, nobody can tell exactly how the three synonymous terms like kingly, royal and regal differ from one another. kingly, royal, regal, kingly is a, a native term, royal and regal are Latin terms. The modality difference and generally uh, In fact, there was no necessity for introducing many synonymous terms from Latin and the Greek, like the Latin pharaohs means lighthouse by the side of lighthouse. Lighthouse is a, uh, is a native term, or Latin negritude means blackness by the side of the blackness. So the native words like cold, cool, chilly, uh, icy, frosty might have quite sufficient for all purposes without any necessity for importing Latin words like frigid, frigid, thicke, frigid manach cold, gelid manach ice cold, and algid manach cold. They will protect I Latin words. You can already English say cool, cold, chilly, ice, shabda gulo, already. 
অলরেডি যেখানে এই শব্দগুলো রয়েছে সো এই সমস্ত ইনফ্লুয়েন্সের ফলে অনেকেই মনে করে দ্যাট ল্যাক ইন ইনফ্লুয়েন্স অন দ্য ইংলিশ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ ইজ দেয়ার ফর সুপার ফ্লুয়েস অ্যান্ড পারপাসলেস সামটাইমস বিকজ অফ দ্য ইনফ্লুয়েন্স অফ দ্য সিনোরিয়ামস নাও লেট ইস বিগিন সাম অফ দ্য ইনকংগ্রুয়েস ল্যাটিন লেট ইস বিগিন ডিসকাশন অন দ্য সাম অফ দ্য মোস্ট ইনকংগ্রুয়েস ল্যাটিন লোন ওয়ার্ডস লোন ওয়ার্ডস ডু নট নেসেসারিলি মেক আ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ ইন হারমোনিয়াস but sometimes uh, in the case of the this uh, this latin influence the foreign elements may be so assimilated in sound and inflection as to be recognizable as nothing but native but in case of latin influence ta onek khetri hoyeche in harmonious the created hoyeche for example wine and tea and bacon and eggs orange and sugar and plunder and and war prison and judge all are not only indispensable but harmonious elements of english but many latin words not all but some of the latin words are quite incongruous for example the latin words like phenomenon diphtheria or intellectual or a uh, latitudinarian seem to be incongruous by the side of the shorter native words and out of harmony with the real core or central part of the language onek shomoy ore dekha geche and some latin plurals seem to be abnormal and break the uh, b- beautiful regularity of neatly plurals in the english as for example phenomenon singular phenomena plural nucleus singular nucle latin word plural index singular indices latin plural per phole naturally at a inharmoniousness in the english language created hoyeche so jodi bola hoy ekon question that whether latin is a help or a hindrance so there are certain advantages and disadvantages help ki ki latin has enriched the english language by enormous addition to the vocabulary and by filling up the gaps it has increased the number of adjectives it has increased the number of the synonyms which is an essential part of the of any vocabulary many latin words are advantageous for international currency and it has a, a given variety and precision of style while other hand what are the hindrances it has stunted the growth of the native vocabulary as people have lost the habit of forming new words english has lost the habit of forming its own adjectives out of many native endings it poses nijer resource use korte kore adjective toiri korte bhule geche but many of these synonyms are superfluous sometimes unnecessary and purposeless and uh, they are out of harmony sometimes with the core of the language and give undemocratic character to the english vocabulary and it has also encouraged an uh, inflated turgidity of style ostentatious style full of learned and, and bombastic jargonized mambo jumbo so this is the latin influence upon the english vocabulary onek gulo historical development er modhe diye latin words english vocabulary te eshe uh, i have already discussed it first it actually begins with the uh, 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 the post celtic period uh, with the invasion of the roman people into the britannia and then in the middle uh, uh, ages it has also mixed with the various uh, french words and of course uh, uh, after the renaissance it has taken a completely uh, different turn and uh, uh, in the uh, industrial age words like apparatus aqueous carnivorous component corpuscule data experiment formula incubate machinery mechanics molecule nucleus organic ratio structure vertebra ei somosto word gulo bhayankar bhabe english apparatus dukeche latin theke so er phole amra dekhte pacchi je latin loan words er english language ekta birad bhumika royeche so if we sum up ki loan words er naam jodi bolte hoy animals er pokkho theke ant ant formic b apian bird avian ei adjective gulo hoyeche crow chilo ekhane corvain latin e native hocche crow cord theke garoid physiology the head chilo adjective hocche capital body theke corporal ear theke oral tooth theke dental astronomy the moon exists koto shekhan theke lunar sun theke solar earth theke terrestrial star theke stellar so uh, agi bolchi sociological words like son or daughter theke filial mother theke maternal father theke paternal 
বুক ছিল লিটারেরি হয়েছে এজ ইংলিশ ছিল মার্জিনাল ফায়ার ছিল ইগনেয়াস ওয়াটার ছিল অ্যাকোয়াটিক উইন্ড থেকে ভেন্টাল সো একটু বোম্যাস্টিক ডিফিকাল্ট শব্দ মানেই আমরা বলতে পারি সেটা একটা ল্যাটিন লোন ওয়ার্ড তোমাদের যদি ওয়ার্ড নোটে সেমান্টিক শিফট থেকে যদি এভোলিউশন অফ দ্য ওয়ার্ডস শব্দের বিবর্তন কেমন হয়েছে যদি পরে কোনো একটা শব্দ যদি দেখতে পাও যে এরকম ভেন্টাল ব্রুটাল তাহলেই বুঝতে পারবে সেটা একটা ল্যাটিন লোন ওয়ার্ড থেকে এই শব্দটা ডিরাইভ করেছে সো আমি আমার এই পার্টিকুলার লেকচারে আই ডিসকাস উইথ ইউ অ্যাবাউট দ্য ইম্প্যাক্ট অফ দ্য ল্যাটিন লিটারেচার আই উইল এন দিস লেকচার বাই শোয়িং সাম অফ দ্য বাই রাদার রিপিটিং সাম অফ দ্য ওয়ার্ডস ইউজড ইন ভেরিয়াস দ্যাট হ্যাজ বিন বরোড ফ্রম দ্য ল্যাটিন ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ ইন টু দ্য ইংলিশ ভোকাবুলারি ফ্রম সাম ফ্রম সার্টেন এরিয়াজ অর ডোমিনস ফর এক্সাম্পল চার্চ চার্চ থেকে ল্যাটিন লোন ওয়ার্ড এঞ্জেল ডোমেস্টিক লাইফ থেকে লাইফ থেকে বরট করা হচ্ছে সিল্ক র্যাডিশ পি পাইন পপি এই সমস্ত ওয়ার্ড প্লান থেকে থেকে ডিরাইভ করা হচ্ছে বিট পাইন অ্যালয়েজ পি এডুকেশন স্কুল মাস্টার গ্রামার ওয়ার্ডস এগুলো সবই ল্যাটিন ওয়ার্ড ডো লবস্টার ফিনিক্স টাটল অ্যানিমেল থেকে এই সমস্ত ওয়ার্ডগুলো বড় করা হয়েছে ভারবে অফার স্পেন স্টপ লয়ের ক্ষেত্রে কনসপিরেসি কাস্টেরি লিগাল প্রসিকিউট টেস্টিমেনি থিওলজি দিক থেকে স্ক্রিপচার ইনকারনেট লিম্বো লিম্বো মিনস দ্য লাস্ট চেম্বার অফ দ্য হেল লিটারেচারে অ্যালিগারি জিনিয়াস ইন্টেলেক্ট প্রসরি ইটসেট্রা সায়েন্স এ মেকানিক্যাল সোলার জেনিত ইমিউন র্যাশনাল দিজ আর ল্যাটিন ওয়ার্ডস সো খানিকটা হলেও আমি ল্যাটিন ইনফ্লুয়েন্স আপন দি ইংলিশ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজের একটা ওভারভিউ তোমাদেরকে দিতে পারলাম অনেকগুলো লোন ওয়ার্ডস ডিসকাস করলাম ডিসকাস করলাম হোয়াই ল্যাটিন ইজ অনেক সময় কোয়েশ্চেন করে ইজ আ হেল্প রাদার ইজ আ মাচ মোর হিন্ড্রেন্স দ্যান আ হেল্প সো পরীক্ষায় টেন মার্কসে কোয়েশ্চেন পড়তেই পারে রাইট এ ব্রিফ নোট অন দ্য ল্যাটিন ইনফ্লুয়েন্স অন দি ইংলিশ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ পড়তেই পারে ইলাস্টেড সাম অফ দ্য ওয়েজ ইন হুইচ ইংলিশ হ্যাজ বিন ইনরিচড বাই দ্য ল্যাটিন এলিমেন্ট ফাইভ মার্কস কোয়েশ্চেনে পড়তে পারে অ্যাবাউট দি ইনফ্লুয়েন্স অফ দ্য ল্যাটিন থ্রু দ্য সায়েন্টিফিক বোকাবুলারি পড়তে পারে চার্চ ওয়ার্ডস অর এক্লেসিয়াস্টিক্যাল ভোকাবুলারি রিলিজিয়ান থেকে কী কী বড় করা হয়েছে কোনো একটা পার্টিকুলার শব্দ দিয়ে বলতে পারে তারা যাক টেস্টিমানি যেটা কী ওয়ার্ড ল্যাটিন কোন পার্টিকুলার এরিয়া থেকে নেওয়া হয়েছে তো এরকম বিভিন্ন ধরনের প্রশ্ন আসতে পারে সো থ্যাংক ইউ সি ইউ ইন দ্য নেক্সট লেকচার ইন দ্য নেক্সট ক্লাস অন দ্য ফ্রেঞ্চ ইনফ্লুয়েন্স সরি অন দ্য স্ক্যান্ডিনেভিয়ান ইনফ্লুয়েন্স অন দ্য ইংলিশ ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ ল্যাটিনের পরে হিস্টোরিক্যালি পরে See you in the next class on the Scandinavian influence on the English language. Bye. See you in the next class.